Welcome back to Free Speech Nation with me, Andrew Doyle. Former deputy leader of the Green Party, Dr. Shara Ali, has been vindicated by a court ruling which said he was discriminated against by the party due to his gender critical views. The court found the party had failed to identify any misconduct and had therefore improperly dismissed Ali as a spokesman and he was awarded £9,100 in damages. However, the ruling did uphold political parties' right to dismiss spokespeople whose views differ from party policy. I'm utterly thrilled to say that Dr. Shara Ali joins me now. Welcome to the show. So, firstly, obviously, congratulations. How do you feel? Well, it was a long haul, wasn't it? I mean, you don't take a political party to court after having toiled over and campaigned for them for 20 years unless you've got a good reason to. Right. So there's nothing like justice, I have to say. And boy, does it really give you confidence in the British justice system that they could see through the smoke and mirrors of the Green Party, all the character assassination I had to deal with for five, six days of trial, and they could see that I was, and the judge has made it very clear, the declaration that we asked for and sought is that I was subjected to unlawful discrimination on account of my gender critical beliefs. And that's crucially important. I had the whole weight of politics on the left on my shoulders, I felt, because we wanted to lay down a marker, a legal yes. marker. Up with this, we cannot put the hostile environment, I would say the fanaticism at an all time high in the Green Party, that rot had to be put a stop to. And it's interesting because, you know, the judge said that, that political parties are allowed to uh, expel people who don't follow the party line on certain policies. But I was never under the impression that this was a Green Party policy. Well, I think, first off, we've had a slew of successful cases in the courts, particularly in the employment tribunal since Forstetter. I think you had Joe Phoenix on earlier. Yes. You know, we've had uh, very successful wins. The importance of politics is difficult to, 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 uh, to overstate. In politics, we expect to be able to have vigorous, rigorous debate. And as an advocate for free speech, I also didn't want the unintended consequence where, if you like, the judgment was too strong. Yes, I understand. It's very important, actually, that people should be able to even offend you, insult you, trade in insults. In and politics, the judge, right, yep. yeah, the judge very astutely, I think, made sure that that was still possible. He right. was doing a balancing act, if you like, between certain articles in the European Convention of Human Rights enshrined in the Human Rights Act. Freedom of speech, freedom of expression and freedom of association. So he rightly put a very high bar and he found that the Green Party still transgressed and discriminated against me. They produced no evidence for their allegations that I had breached the spokespeople's people's code of conduct. And the reason they didn't produce any evidence, because they never had any. Yes. And so they were caught out. But like you say, ever since the Fostata case, uh, the belief that there are two sexes, that those sexes are immutable, that's a protected belief in law. So this is a discrimination aspect, just as the party wouldn't be expected to discriminate against someone for being black or gay or something like that. I think um, you might also wish to distinguish between the obligations upon an ordinary member mm -hmm. to comply, if you like, with uh, a political party's policies and that upon a spokesperson. And I freely admit, in fact, I signed the Code of Conduct on the understanding that were I to breach it, then there would be consequences. The fact is, is that those breaches were never identified, shown to me. Even in the court of law over five days, they had a second shot at it and they still couldn't do it. Because what's interesting, though, is the Green Party, I would call them a gender critical party, because we've got policies on single sex wards for women mm -hmm. in hospitals to preserve patient dignity. We've got policies that no school children, sh no, no child should leave school without a proper medical understanding of reproduction. That is biological sex. That is not um, out of kilter no. with the common and belief which we commonly call gender critical. So can I ask what the response has been from other members of your party? Because, you know, you say yeah. you've, you've sued your own party. Yes. I can imagine a lot of people in the Green Party thinking, oh, he's a traitor, you know? No, it, the opposite is the case. Those people who have put me and many others through this, we've got Alison Till, uh, Emma Bateman, they are being persecuted. Alison Till, let's just take, take her. She was duly selected for Sheffield Central, which is a target ward um, in 2022, and she's been unable to campaign because of the uh, disciplinary action, she's on a no-fault suspension. All these no-fault suspensions against gender-critical members have to stop. It's completely out outrageous. The reaction has been 
denial, I have to say. Oh, I've really? been watching in a couple of days, you know, what the reaction has been from the Green Party. They're trying to minimise it. They're trying to claim that it's some kind of procedural error. It's not procedural. Justice isn't just an end. It's a means. We talk about the presumption of innocence. If, you, if I were to, to lock you up without even producing evidence and giving you a fair trial, do you think that is just a procedural error? No, as the judge himself called it, he called it procedural unfairness. It was unjust. And in the very act of disciplining me, they also demonstrated their discrimination. Because the reason, and this is important actually, not only was I hauled up before um, this confected process without any evidence, but in the very act of, suspect, of removing me as a spokesperson, they demonstrated their discrimination against me. So what would you like to see happen now? Well, let's put it like this. Can you imagine any political party where the leaders were co-responsible because they voted on an executive committee to remove somebody that that had been judged unlawful discrimination, in the words of the judge, and they would still be there? No. So let's do politics differently. So my challenge, not just to the membership, to take a grip of your party, to assert yourselves, you should be asking questions of the co-leaders who were at the executive committee that was responsible for unlawful discrimination. If they don't have the self-respect to resign, that they should be held to account. And as far as I'm concerned, there should be a new leadership election. A leadership election which has already been postponed, by the way. Can I ask you finally, Shara, this is not just about the Green Party. No. There are problems with other parties. The SNP have these problems. Sinn Féin has these problems. Mm -hmm. w what will the ramifications be more broadly? Well, at the, end of, uh, at the end of the day, what I said earlier is that we need to lay down a marker mm. that um, discrimination, we wouldn't tolerate sex discrimination, well, maybe you do in the Green Party, unfortunately, race discrimination, religious belief discrimination, we mustn't tolerate gender critical discrimination. It's a protected belief for a reason. There is no hierarchy of protected characteristics. And I've even heard it said, oh, this gives certain fanatics in the Green Party, I don't think there's any, you know, call a spade a spade, right? That it gives them a license to discriminate against people because of this higher threshold. That is an extraordinary way of looking at this case. What, what every political party should be thinking is that, by God, we've got to make sure that we can not only comply with the law, we make sure that we do not, we end the hostile environment that Rosie Duffield of this world, all, particularly on the left, have had to face for over a decade now. The parties should be thinking, how can I align my policies with the communal garden belief that is used to organise society and has been for centuries. Mm -hmm. Not how can I best get away with discriminating against people. That would be a, a, even more of a rabbit hole for this Green Party. So it's an opportunity. This is my gift to the Green Party, if you like. It's a wake-up call. It's a reality check. And let's get back things on track because we've got a climate calamity. And we have a lot. We have social justice, proper social justice, and women's rights and free speech as part of that. That would be the true Green position. Shara Lee, thank you so much for coming. You're welcome.